You've seen the puns. Now it's time to dig into it. Jay Hill is expected to be BYU's new assistant head coach and a coordinator. We're talking about it on Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider, and I am distracted today. I'm not going to lie. We got a lot to talk about on today's show, but a quick reminder that our title sponsors are friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is helping you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. Uh, By way of introduction, my name is Jake. Once again, I am your host here on Locked On Cougars. I work for the KSL Sports Zone. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always pleased to be having you guys join us. And like I said, I'm distracted because I was on my way home. I had a great opportunity once again to MC the John Watson Northern Utah High School Player of the Week Awards Banquet. Tonight, I guess I'm, I'm recording this on Tuesday night. It's going to be our Wednesday edition of the podcast, but I'm going to release it as soon as I possibly can. But on my way home, got a couple of phone calls slash text messages from people saying, hey, so you know that news about Jay Hill, or the rumors involving in Jay Hill? Well, they're legit and it is inbound. So, folks. Get yourself ready. The J Hill experience is coming to BYU. I am expecting it to be announced on Wednesday morning, but regardless, it is a done deal. Jay Hill will be one of Kalani Sitake's top lieutenants, if not his top lieutenant. I am expecting him to hold the titles of assistant head coach and or a defensive coordinator and or special teams coordinator. Essentially, whatever Jay Hill wants, Jay Hill will get in this title business when it comes to the BYU football program. This is an absolute grand slam, grade A, A plus, 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 plus higher for the BYU football program. Jay Hill is a highly accomplished coach at Weaver State. He has led them to the FCS playoffs. I've I've talked about this multiple times over the past week or so talking about Jay Hill and candidacy to be one of Kalani Sitake's assistant coaches. This is a guy who has got all kinds of experience. He's an ace recruiter. He's done a fantastic job on the recruiting trail, both during his time at the University of Utah, as well as his time as the head coach at Weber State. He is coming to BYU, and he is going to be absolutely awesome in the role that he is inheriting. Now, I think that the the coordination of Ed Lamb being announced as Northern Colorado's new head coach that came earlier today as well, on Tuesday and the expected announcement within 24 hours of Jay Hill as the new assistant head coach at BYU. Those are not coincidental. I believe that BYU is making sure that Ed Lamb was able to exit stage right, get his new gig intact, and we wish him nothing but the best. And now Jay Hill moves in to take over that title. This is a very similar move to what Ed Lamb made back in 2017, excuse me, 2016, when he came up from Southern Utah and became the assistant head coach slash special teams coordinator under Kani Sitake. It's, it's essentially a mere image of one another. And things, let's be honest, as Ed Lamb's uh, time at BYU got later on into its tenure, it had worn thin. Uh, some of his philosophies, that type of stuff had worn thin. That's what Jay Hill, I, I don't think that he's going to come in with some revolutionary idea of how he's going to go about developing athletes and making them into football players. The, what Ed Lamb was trying to do was noble, but there's a reason why that hockey subs, every single player you recruit has to meet height and weight and span requirements. The, the philosophies that Ed Lamb had are like pie in the sky, absolutely awesome, but there's a reason why in reality, very few, if any, other football programs did what he did. Now, let me also add the caveat that I immensely, and I, I, I'm sincere about this, I immensely respect Ed Lamb for who he is. Very few coaches, in fact, he might be the only one I can remember, His one of his very first days after getting hired at BYU, I was sitting at a table in the student athlete building awaiting a press conference with those new assistant coaches. That included guys like uh, Ed Lamb, uh, who else was that at the time? Ty Detmer, all those hires that Kalani had made or were forced upon him in the case of Ty Detmer, but that's beside the point. 
Ed Lamb walked out and he wasn't even scheduled to speak to the media quite yet. And he walked up to every single one of us sitting at that table, yours truly included, and said, hi, guys, my name's Ed Lamb. I'm one of the new assistant coaches. It's good to meet you guys. Shook every single one of our hands and thanked us for coming out. Like I said, that's that's atypical behavior of most coaches. And most coaches are are, are great dudes by and large. But to do that unprompted, that, that was, man, Talk about a stand-up gentleman. So I wish Ed Lamb nothing but the best. He's going to Greeley, Colorado to head the Northern Colorado Bears program and wish him nothing but the best. But the big news is Jay Hill is inbound to Provo. The other thing about this, my friends, is Jay Hill had to be convinced, wink, wink, in terms of the financials to get him to Provo. Money talks. I don't care what you want to say. Money does talk in this scenario. And based on what I understand, the conversation I had with people, this is the biggest financial investment I at least am aware of that BYU has ever made in an assistant coach. Uh, Patrick Kinahan, who I work with on a daily basis, he has tweeted as such. And this is a sign of the times, folks. BYU might finally, and I'm at long last, Praise be that they have finally gotten with the times and are trying to act like a big time program. For many, many years, they aspired to be that level, but tried to play a pauper's wages while living like a king. Well, guess what? BYU is now actually paying, quote unquote, going rates for coordinators, assistant coaches, and the like. That is a positive. I, and I cannot express this enough. It is a just awesome awesome development for the BYU football program. They're finally living up to what I have been advocating for for months, if not years, on this here podcast. They have needed to invest in this program, and it appears they are finally doing so, and it's yielding them one of the top hires, in my opinion, of this uh, coaching cycle in getting Jay Hill exit a very successful situation he found himself in. He was in no danger at any point. He he could do whatever he wanted at Weber State, and he was in no danger of losing that job. And to convince him to bypass uh, multiple other opportunities, he's had opportunities to coach G5 programs, be the, move to the G5, which is Mountain West-type schools, and be the head coach there. And he has passed on all of them, and BYU, he was now, and I'm not saying that's happening this cycle. It's happened in previous cycles. And there's also stories about them, about him also passing on an opportunity at one point to go back to the University of Utah to work for Kyle Whittingham. That was a different situation. Let me be very clear about that. But for BYU to pull this off, to get Jay Hill to Provo, to be one of the top lieutenants for Kalani Sitake and to bring his expertise, recruiting, uh, knowing how to build a program, just being that guy that Kalani Satake some, takes some of the load off Satake while at the same time hopefully upgrading BYU's defense, bringing a new philosophy, and hopefully attracting some extra players. This is a just, I cannot express how great of a hire this is for the BYU football program. Does this mean that uh, anticipated announcement of uh, not Brady Papinga, Kelly Papinga as BYU's potential linebackers coach slash special teams coordinator could come alongside that. Yes, it could, but I have not confirmed that myself. I do expect that Jay Hill will be announced, and it may be a couple of weeks or days or whatever it might be before other assistant coaches are announced, but I can see very easily them announcing Jay Hill and then in short order say Kelly Papinga is joining the staff, Gennaro Guilford is sticking around with BYU, and then on you go. Uh, let me let me just go back to the point that matters. Jay Hill is an awesome, awesome hire. He's worked with special teams. He's worked on the offensive side of the football. He's worked on defense. He's been a coordinator at multiple levels, both the G5, the Power 5, and now a head coach at the FCS level, at the top of the FCS level. This is a guy who gets it. He knows what he's doing, and the best part is this is a guy who is from Utah Valley and not afraid to get after it on the recruiting trail. The the, the Gone are the days of people lamenting the fact that BYU is not getting after it, recruiting on the defensive side of the football. Kalani Satake has purged that out of his program, and it's nothing against Elisa Tuiaki. I anticipate Preston Hadley. Ed Lamb obviously has exited. Uh, Kevin Klune may be on his way out. It's nothing against those guys, but they were far far too passive when it comes to recruiting. That is something that Jay Hill will not let happen under his leadership. Obviously, this is a guy, as I've mentioned before, who has pulled power five level guys to Weber State recruiting. 
That is that, that's the mark of a guy who knows what he's doing out on the recruiting trail and has not lost that passion for it. It may in some ways be a demotion for him, for him to step back from being a head coach to being an assistant head coach. But I see this as Jay Hill setting up for what he has aspired to do for many, many years. And that is to jump to the power five and be a head coach there. It's very, very difficult. If not, absolutely impossible unless you're Paul Wolf, I think going from Eastern Washington to Washington state. Uh, it's nigh unto impossible to jump from the FCS level to the power five level. This, if it works out, will set up Jay Hill to make the jump to being a power five head coach. Whether that is when Kyle Whittingham decides to hang it up at Utah, him and Morgan Scally potentially battling it out, duking it out for who gets to succeed Kyle Whittingham or there's a bevy of other jobs. The Power Five always has open positions. If it works out the way that I envision it could, and obviously Jay Hill envisions it will, this will set him up to make his next move, which is to be a Power Five head coach. It, this is, man, I cannot use enough superlatives here to express how awesome this is. This is a gigantic coup for Kalani Satake. He pulled off one of the best hires he has ever made. And he's made some good hires during his time. Jeff Grimes, Aaron Roderick come to mind. Fessy Satake comes to mind. Uh, General Guilford comes to mind. Steve Clark is an underrated hire. There are a number of great hires that Kalani's had. He's had some, he's bungled some as well. But this one, this may top them all. It's an absolutely phenomenal pickup. Now, the great news is there. Some downer news involving a top-level recruit that BYU had in their program and his younger brother, who is committed to a program that's just up on the hill 40 miles away. Uh, we'll talk about that next and what to make of the Fano family situation. We'll also round out today's show with some notes uh, on uh, Jay Hill as well as some basketball. And the BYU's basketball is in action tonight as well. we still got plenty to hit on on that front. And Folks, let me just say one more time. Welcome to BYU, Jay Hill, and look forward to this new era of BYU football. Gone are so many of the things that many of us out there have opined about in terms of the recruiting issues, the, the laissez-faire attitude, some of the the, the discipline uh, at lacking at times on the field with defensive players. Like So much of that stuff is going to go by the wayside because Jay Hill, he commands respect, and his guys, they play hard, and he will demand that. He will demand that these guys that play for him get after it. This is just, this is a happy, happy day if you're a BYU fan. All right, coming up here in just a minute, like I said, let's talk about the Fano family situation. Before we get to that, though, let's talk about our friends over at LinkedIn. Every day, uh, these new potential hires you'd be making as a small business owner feel like a high high stakes wager for you because obviously you don't want to make a bad investment. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. And that's why you have it have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs is helping you find the right people for your team faster and for free. The best part is you can go online, set up this uh, profile. Your, your job posting is what I, sh I should say and get it set up and then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to help spread the word that you are hiring. It helps people know that, Hey, this is a thing to check out. They feature simple tools like screening questions, making it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to hire and interview as well. It's why small businesses are rating LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. The best part about this is, my friends, LinkedIn jobs is helping you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. You can post your job for free. You heard that right. F-R-E-E, -E, free 99 at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash slash locked on college to post that job for free. Once again, terms and conditions apply. All right, let's talk more about what's going on with the Logan final situation. Before we do that, though, I want to make sure you guys check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with the local experts and insights only the Locked On Network can provide. That's Locked On Sports Today, the podcast, available on this app, YouTube, or wherever. You get your podcast. All right. So some bummer news came yesterday by way of the transfer portal an announcement from Logan Fano, BYU freshman defensive lineman, a guy that was a four-star prospect, had a long saga with BYU, if you will recall, uh, during his recruiting saga, got offered by BYU as an eighth grader, decommitted uh, from that offer after he committed early on, went and visited multiple programs, was thought to be a lean to a various number of Power 5 programs during his high school career as he stood out on the gridiron for Timpview High School. Then in the end, he comes back around and says, you know what? 
I want to go to BYU and commits to the Cougars, uh, goes on a mission that gets cut short. He comes home and he's expected to be a big part of BYU's pass rush as a defensive lineman for BYU. He gets into spring ball, barely was it one practice, maybe the second practice, and he tears his ACL. Brutal brutal break for BYU because they were like I said they were counting on this kid being an impact player even as a freshman coming into the program well he was the good soldier he did a great uh, podcast by the way it, it, if you listen to Jeff Hansen I know there are people out there lambasting Jeff for Logan going on that podcast last week and essentially insinuating that he was locked in with BYU I never heard a clear statement I listened to the entirety of that podcast twice I never he heard him clearly say that hey BYU is where I'm going to be but he all but said it I, I assumed, okay, it's done. He, he's sticking around at BYU. He loves Kalani. Okay, that done deal. This is, a, this is a great kid. He likes the program. He wouldn't have come back around to BYU uh, had things not worked out uh, the way they did on the recruiting trail. And even if his brother commits elsewhere, it sounds like he is content to stick with the Cougars. Well, as they say, the only constant in life is change. And he changed his mind. That, that, that's simple as that. And I don't have the inside details that guys like Jeff Hansen have. Jeff literally has known Logan since he was 14 years old as that eighth grader who got that offer from BYU. It was insanely early to get that offer. But Jeff knows about as well as anybody. If you did not read the thread that Jeff did on Twitter, even if you're not on Twitter, just search out Rakudu10, R-A-K-O-T-O-1-0, Rakudu10 on Twitter. Just search it on Google and it'll pop up. You can read the thread of what he wrote about Logan Fonnell and what he knows about him and the situation. I, I can back Jeff up on this by saying that in recruiting and the transfer portal era, the, the, the it's the wild West. It's just, it's, there's, it's, it's a lawless place. It, it, things are just happening left and right down center. It, it, it it's insane. Guys are changing their mind literally on a whim. And these are young men. Let's remind you of that. These are 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, even up to 24 years old at BYU. But they are still young men, and they are prone to make boneheaded okay bone i need to retract that it's not boneheaded they're they're prone to make uh, spur of the moment decisions and change their minds minutes hours days later and have no inclination as to why any of you who can remember back to your late teens early 20s you were flying really by the seat of your pants your college days there's a reason why they call it your college experience now if you're like me to BYU, there were people who say that it validated your college experience. I had a great time going to BYU. I, I, I enjoyed my time on campus at the Y. I, it was a school I always aspired to go to, and I had a great time. There are plenty of other people who go to other universities, have a very different experience. But during that period, I can think of roommates who woke up one day and said, you know what I'm going to do? I can think of one vividly. He woke up one day and decided, I'm going to Yellowstone today. It was like midweek. It was like a Wednesday. He uh, kind of looked at his schedule school-wise and said, ah, I can blow off classes. And he drove to Yellowstone and spent the weekend there backpacking and exploring Yellowstone. That is what happens in this day and age, uh, even now with these young men. They make spur-of-the-moment decisions, and something changed for Logan Fano. So wish him the best. Do not go on social media, as I've seen some of you clowns out there doing. And if you're listening to this podcast and you are guilty of this, I would encourage you to delete that tweet and apologize. But if you are going after the Fano family, calling them names, saying they're quote-unquote cowards, uh, all that stuff, Spencer Fano is committed to Utah. I am fully anticipating Logan Fano announcing he's going to go to the University of Utah. The other thing he said to Jeff Hansen on uh, the, the Logan Fano show as part of Give Him Help, Brigham the podcast, he said that my dad's dream for us is to play together. So with Spencer Fano, a top-level recruit, a four-star prospect in his own right as an offensive tackle committing to Utah, I would fully expect Logan Fano will be a Ute. And I know that that burns every BYU fan. It chaps your hide. It makes you feel just sick because the Utes got another one over on you. They got two four-star prospects, one of which is transferring from your program. You had beaten the dirty, dirty Utes to win out in the Logan Fano sweepstakes. And what does he do a year after ultimately landing at BYU? He, in your mind, may have turned tail and runs to Utah. But you know what? These are young men making decisions that are in the best interest of themselves, their families, and hopefully what they're hoping, their livelihoods. They are hoping to make it to the league and set them and their families up financially for literally the rest of their lives, if not generationally, on down to their kids and their kids' kids. This is a business decision as much as anything else, and I'm not saying it has anything to do with NIL. I have no clue 
on that front. I'm saying it's a business business decision in terms of setting yourself up for giving yourself the best opportunity to achieve your dreams and what you've always aspired to do as a young man. I've said this before on this podcast. I grew up dreaming of playing tight end for the San Francisco 49ers. It became readily apparent when I was a sophomore in high school that, you know what? That's a bit of a stretch. You're not six foot five. You're not 250 pounds, Jake. You can't run like a gazelle. The best you can do is play right guard for a middling uh, high school football team who, by the way, your senior season overachieved and won a region championship. Th that was the, that was the end of my playing career and the end of my dream of playing in the NFL. Guys like Logan Fano and Spencer Fano, they have legit possibility of being guys who play on Sundays. And the fact that they're going to maybe do it at the University of Utah together, I get why it would bug you. But let's also just wish these guys well. They are making the best decision in their mind for themselves. And like I said, it changes almost in an instant, in a blink of an eye, and that's what's happening. So, yes, it hurts to lose Logan Fano. He's the sixth guy that we know of entering the NCAA transfer portal and he is absolutely so far the biggest loss for BYU in the transfer portal there are other guys no no offense to guys like Terrence Fall but Terrence Fall is small potatoes compared to what Logan Fano Logan Fano similar to Campbell Barrington I had him penciled in as a starter next year for BYU he was gonna be playing defensive end opposite of Tyler Batty and bringing a pass rush tandem to BYU that I'm not sure that BYU has seen in the entirety of Kalani Sitake's tenure Alas, it appears he will be suiting up in red and playing up on the hill at Rice Cycle Stadium instead. And I, I get the angst about it, but let it go. That's the best thing you can do. Holding on to that stuff. It's the whole, it's the whole adage about uh, holding a grudge like drinking poison and hoping your your opponent or whatever your your enemy dies. That that's it. It does nothing but uh, canker your soul. So, wish the final family best. They're making the best decision in their minds for themselves. And let's just let's just stand by. I, I've said this before. The transfer portal taketh, and it it took a big one for BYU. It took a big one away from the Cougars. But the hope is the transfer portal will deliver something good for BYU as well. And the other thing is, there's still talent in that pipeline. Logan is a four-star prospect. There's no doubt about that. But there's a certain guy. His name is John Henry Daly. Played at Lone Peak High School. I called the number of his high school football games, and he is as accomplished a pass rusher as Logan Fano. Logan may have the size on him in terms of like the measurables, height, weight, that type of stuff, but John Henry Daly, folks, there's a reason why BYU was was working so hard to get his signature. His older brother, Michael Daly, is in the program already, was an elite pass rusher of his own. But I think Michael, if you gave him true serum, would admit that John Henry Daly is the better player of the two and cannot wait to see John Henry Daly get home from a mission. It, or I think it's mid-2023. I think he'll probably be, uh, maybe he gray shirts next year, but there's still talent out there for BYU. And hopefully guys like Tyler Batty, uh, can step up and fill that void that Logan Fano left for BYU. John Nelson, by the way, was a very, very uh, good pass rusher this past season, kind of the breakout star at defensive end for BYU. So there's still talent there, but there's no doubt that losing Logan Fano absolutely hurts the BYU football program. But one other thing about this, getting Jay Hill, kind of going back to our previous conversation, getting Jay Hill locked in now with the portal just opening, they can hit the recruiting trail and Jay can start selling his vision to guys. If they're looking at defensive linemen, linebackers, defensive backs, even offensive players, a guy like Jay can go out and sell the vision for what BYU is going to be in the Big 12. And that now that he is expected to be locked in, he hits the ground running and there may be a pass rusher or two out there in the portal that BYU's targeting that may fall in love with the vision that Jay Hill has for BYU and what their defense is going to look like. And they may come in and blow us all away and be like, Logan Fano who? And that, that would be great. And by the way, I hope Logan Fano kills it. I, I know that playing for Utah, you don't want him to do great, but I hope he kills it. But I at the same time, I'm sincerely hoping BYU, they can find the production they are looking for in that pass rush. All right. Whew, we've covered a lot so far today. Let's talk a little basketball before we go on today's show. We need to talk a little bit about BYU and UU. The Crosstown Clash at the Marriott Center tonight. Can BYU bounce back from that disappointing loss to South Dakota? We'll get to that momentarily. First, another word on our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there and do it with our friends at Bet Online. Uh, the best part is, if you love sports podcasts, you can also find those at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting fixed at Bet Online, whether it's live betting, futures odds. I'm literally looking at 
text message I just got. Kind of funny. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but you can head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more now. More more now. Excuse me. At Bet Online. That's where the game starts. Today's show also brought to you by our friends over at UCCU. UCCU is offering a 15-month savings certificate with an incredibly high APY of 4.00%. Plus, you can jump up to an even higher rate of return anytime during the life of your your certificate. What it is, my friends, trying to help you guys out when it comes to the high interest rates and inflation, they're both on the rise and expected to continue to climb because there's news out there that the Federal Federal Reserve is going to jump those interest rates once again. And we are nearing recession territory in the economy. Well, that's where UCCU comes in. They want to help you guys out. Use that current raise in rights to your advantage. They're offering that 15 month savings certificate, which has a 4.00% APY return on it. It blows the water out of any other type of savings account, money market, whatever it might be. And the best part is if those rates continue to rise during that 15 month period, you got that opportunity to jump that rate one time during that 15 months. So you can go into UCCU and check it out. Now stop into a branch, give them a call, go online to uccu.com and get started. I can attest that UCCU is a phenomenal, phenomenal financial institution because guess who's been banking with them for three decades of their life? This guy, Jay Catch. I love UCCU and I am actually in the process myself of getting a savings certificate, this 15 month savings certificate. I'm putting some money in it, socking it away, and hopefully can jump that up at some point during the 15 months to come. So get to uccu.com to learn more now or get started on that savings certificate. That's UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. Love having you guys uh, be a part of it, weighing in with your comments, your DMs. Uh, By the way, I'll throw it out right now. Would love for you guys uh, to be a part of this. And uh, w- with it being a Thursday, we're going to do our mailbag edition. Oh, by the way, I just saw this tweet come in. Pete Thamel, of course, the guy who was the insider for ESPN. Sources, say head coach Jay Hill is leaving to become the defensive coordinator at BYU. If deal has been finalized, he went 68 and 39 over nine years at Weber State, called the defense there as the all-time wins leader for the Wildcats. He took Weber State to the six FCS playoffs. As BYU heads to the Big 12, Hill takes over a defense that ranked 100th nationally this past year. He's worked at Utah on offense, defense, and special teams coordinator from 2001 to 2013 before taking that Weber State job. It is a done deal, my friends. Uh, You have heard it here. You've heard it everywhere. It is done. Congratulations. Jay Hill is BYU's new defensive coordinator slash assistant head coach. I assume he takes the assistant head coach title. I don't know that for certain, but this is a phenomenal, phenomenal hire. I actually probably should take down that graphic for our friends at Bet Online. We're not talking about them anymore, but nonetheless, huge. Huge news out there for BYU, but it's not the only thing going on on campus today, Wednesday. That is BYU men's basketball in the Crosstown Clash. They take on the Utah Valley Wolverines. UVU, under the direction of Mark Madsen, is 4-4 four and four on the season, most recently beating Long Beach State. 88 to 78 on I was that was last Saturday. So about the same time BYU was playing South Dakota, they were taking care of business against Long Beach State. They come to BYU in their past five games with a two and three record. Uh, UVU has won two of those games. BYU has won the other three. And the way BYU played against South Dakota, if they play that same way, UVU is imminently capable of getting that record in the past six games to three and three. BYU's got to be on their toes. They are playing on their home court once again. I know Vivint, it's not necessarily a long trip because it's up in Salt Lake, but it's not your home turf. And I think BYU will be uh, doing well to get back home. Uh, they've got four players, speaking of UVU, averaging double digits and points led by Justin Harmon with 14.1 points. Trey Woodbury, once upon a time, a BYU uh, recruit, has 13.1 points. Azine, Aziz Bendigo, ben, ben, Bendigo? I'm Man, I'm butchering that name. He's averaging 12 points and 10 rebounds. He's a double-double machine. He's uh, averaging a double-double on the season. And then Trey Darthard uh, is averaging 11 11- Point four points per game. So uh, Mark Madsen maybe doesn't have his best team that he's had in his short tenure at UVU, but he's got guys who can fill it up. And BYU's got to be wary of that. It sounds like uh, Spencer Johnson's injury is going to keep him out longer than what we all had hoped for. Uh, speaking of BYU starting shooting guard. So BYU's got to do what they did. If they can play the type of defense, and by the way, uh, there was a question out there, I think uh, sent in via YouTube, and I, I'm, just, I'm going off the cuff here because I didn't anticipate talking about this year, but you Jake, BYU shows that they've got a pretty good bench. Could they go with this pressing style of defense all the time? And I don't know if they could, but they should probably give it more of an option because the fact that they held South Dakota without a field goal for 10 minutes 
of that game on Saturday that allowed them to grind their way back from a 21 point deficit at the 10 minute mark and ultimately lost by one. And it's a, it's a, it's a brutal loss when it comes to your net ratings and that type of stuff. And BYU's a middling five and four on the season, but that pressing defense the way BYU executed it on Saturday. I didn't encourage Mark Pope and he has no reason to listen to me ever on any basketball note. I'll be very frank about that, but I would encourage them to give that more of a shot because it was effective. So maybe you don't necessarily do it all game, every game, because just teams get worn out doing stuff like that in a 30 game season, but use it in different like circumstances. You feel like you need to get a big stop. We'll press them, uh, get out there with that full court press and, and force them to break it. It can be an effective defense and something just to kind of throw at teams, I guess, at times, you don't have, like I said, you don't need to use it all the time, but it might be an option for BYU. Looking forward to this one, obviously. Uh, UVU and BYU have had some classic games over their brief history of playing one another. Uh, I'll never forget uh, Mark Pope actually coming to the Marriott Center and blowing the doors off BYU, shooting the three. It was just a, it, it wasn't a good moment if you're a BYU fan because they they were just unconscious from three, similar to what we saw from South Dakota against BYU last Saturday. But it was one of the memorable games, and they've played some classics recently. The hope is BYU handles their business tonight. They bounce back from that South Dakota win. Uh, Tip-off is set for 7 o'clock. It'll be on BYU TV. Uh, Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler calling the action. Greg Rubel and uh, Mark Durant will have it on the radio side of things. But looking forward to this one. I will be out of the Marriott Center taking it in. Get you a full report after it goes final. But we'll have you covered top to bottom when it comes to the Jay Hill news. We got you covered. We, we, we have got everything going on when it comes to BYU. And hope you guys are doing great out there. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal day if you're a Cougar fan. Uh, for... Kalani Satake to replace guys like uh, Ed Lamb and Elisa Tuiaki, where it had reached the end of its rope. And to get a guy that's just so respected as Jay Hill, folks, this is a great, great day if you're a BYU fan. So enjoy it and look forward to that official announcement of Jay Hill in the morning hours. Uh, whether you're watching this in the afternoon on Wednesday afternoon, it's probably hap already happened with regards to the press conference. But hey, I'll get another edition out as soon as I possibly can when it comes to the official announcement with any other details that could pop up. Other coaches announced like Kelly Papinga, et cetera, we'll get you covered top to bottom. You guys know where to come. This is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars right here on Locked On Cougars. Once again, thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Go make your second listen. Our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast, always great stuff with Josh uh, Neighbors doing his thing, covering all things Big 12. Get that free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And also, right here on YouTube. All right, that'll do it for myself. Have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked on Cougars podcast. See